What is up? This is Jim Ellie with Reactive Training Systems. And today I'm gonna to go over a quick tip on how to improve the upper back tightness and stability in the squat. When working with power lifters, a lot of times we see lifters utilize their elbows to create an upper back shelf. And this is a good thing to do when you don't have a lot of muscle mass because you can artificially create more support using that elbow positioning. However, it requires a lot of shoulder protraction, which in the long run will reduce overall stability. And stability as you're increasing weight becomes more and more of a problem as you get stronger and stronger. So I'm gonna bring in my friend and fellow powerlifting coach here at Los Campeones Gym to help demonstrate and teach a better way to increase upper back tightness in the squat. So I'm here right now with my buddy Tyson Eckel. Uh, his Instagram is at Tyson has your back on Instagram. It's relevant to the video and the, the future videos we'll be making together. But today we're just talking about increasing your upper back tightness. And yesterday we were talking together about how when we work with lifters, we, we see that they use their elbows a lot. And you were talking about a way that you use to help them find a better shelf and to create more stability. And I was hoping you could kind of describe that before we show you guys what it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So starting with establishing the position, finding the shelf, uh, I like to use the bar starting at, at kind of the upper trap area and then rolling it down and feeling the spine of the scapula, that bony ridge. And once you can kind of feel where that is, uh, just placing it right underneath there um, and then putting the, the shoulder blades relatively together and then in your back pockets, and from there, once you find the shelf, uh, using the bar is kind of like a rolling pin to just roll, you can use your wrist just to, to trap as much of the rear delt tissue um, underneath the bar and that really secures the bar in under the shelf as much as possible. So what you're kind of saying is you wanna start high with the bar and then slowly get into that position where you, you find that shelf and then using your wrists instead of your elbows to, to lock that position in. And a lot of people, they'll use their elbows to lock the position, but in turn, they're also changing the structure a bit of their back and they're changing how that might feel as they descend in the movement. So when you use your wrists, you're able to, like you said, use a rolling pin and, and kind of double down on the shelf and reinforce the shelf with that security that the wrists can provide. So I hope you enjoyed watching that little tutorial. I know that it's something that's really helpful for me and something that you might not have heard and might not have paid attention to is the fact that Tyson uses his legs to actually reinforce the shelf that he creates. Once you find the shelf, use the leg drive that you have and that way you can really, really dig the barbell into the upper back because a lot of times, I know you have lifters where you see this too, but if the elbows are too wide or they're too protracted, even if you double down, then the bar starts sliding off. And something we didn't mention before, but use chalk. It's really important to use chalk the moment you feel like the barbell is sliding down your back. And yesterday when we were training, I had that issue where I was using a, a shirt that was pretty slippery. Not this one, of course. A shirt that was slippery and it, it made it difficult to even hold on to 225 on the back, or 100 kilos if you guys are watching, 
100 kilos on the back without some chalk. So if you can add chalk the moment you feel like it's slippery, well, it doesn't matter what we just taught you. If you don't have chalk or if there's not enough tension or enough friction to keep the bar on the rear delt, there's gonna be enough force to pull it down. So take the ego out of the lift so that you can build momentum. We were talking about that yesterday, building momentum with the warm ups so that by the time you get to that top set, it feels even better versus this warm up isn't feeling that good. The barbell started to slide a little bit quicker than I wanted it to. And uh, now I'm just gonna go home because I, I didn't just put some chalk on my back. Have you experienced that yourself? Yeah, it's there's there's no point where the the weight is too light to start adding adding the chalk. Uh, treating all the warm up sets like the the working weight, the competition weight is going to uh, be beneficial. So use those tools as, as soon as you need them. Yeah, exactly. Use the tools as soon as you need them, and try to take the ego away from making the decision when you need them. It doesn't need to be the super heavy heavy weight or the heaviest weight you've ever lifted to start actually making those stability improvements, which I think in the long run will really increase your strength output, your strength potential. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, subscribe to our channel, send this video to friends who might not have the, the best upper back stability. And overall, one last thing, if you feel like this is difficult to implement, keep working on, on building the upper back so you have more muscle to actually utilize here. Obviously, Tyson and I have been training for what, seven years? So it's a little easier to implement when you have that upper back uh, musculature, but even still, this, this video will apply to you as a beginner and as you get better and, and bigger overall. So again, subscribe, like, share, do your thing, and we will talk to you guys in the next video. Reactive training systems.